So welcome, everybody. Welcome to Virtual Sipping and Painting Hampton. And tonight, we're going to see Forest Floor. So um, it's a fun painting. Uh, the original was uh, by uh, Kelly Doak, and she was a very free and easy painter. So it's a great painting to do uh, on your own because it can really be anything you want it to be. It's uh, very very uh, loosely painted and really fun colors. And you can change up the colors. You don't even have to keep that scene. You can have fun with it. So on hand here, I have paint. Hopefully you've got some paint. I have acrylic paint here. I have blue, black, white, yellow, and green. And I just have that on a paper plate, which I'm going to call my palette. And I have two jars of water. I always keep around these mason jars. I like the mason jars because they're heavy, but... Um, you can even one container of water will do. I use two because it just prevents me having to run back and forth and uh, go to the sink to clean the water. Two keeps me for a whole evening, and that's nice. So I also have these brushes. I got a big brush. Let's see, I'm, I'm looking at my final speed here. Make sure you can see that. I got the big one-inch brush, and then a medium-sized half-inch brush that's cut straight across, and then a small round brush that I'm going to use to do this painting. And my brushes, I have long handles. I think somebody mentioned they had short handles. The only difference between long handle and short handle brushes is usually we use short handle brushes when we're working on a table because it's closer work to us. And we use longer handle brushes when we're working with an easel. But it's, there's no requirement that way. That's just the convention that artists usually use because they're standing when they're using an easel and they're further back. So um, whatever you have on hand, we'll do. So, I am going to get started. Oh, and I also have a rag here, or paper towels will do, or the napkins from your last takeout. Something to blot your brushes on is something you'll need as well. So we're going to do this painting for us floor. Oh, and because this is sipping and painting, you got to make sure you have your snacks on hand too. I have my tea. I have tea tonight. I'm the tea holder tonight, but it is sangria tea, so that's kind of party night, right? <laughs> Oh, my assistant's thinking he gazes at me because I'm drinking their tea. <laughs> that's, that's their flavor. So, um, but yeah, you can get the wine handy, or I've been drinking hard seltzer since past week, but I ran out, so I'm getting the tea on tonight. So, I'm going to start with the big brush, and I'm going to dip my brush in the water jar just to get it all started. And when we work with acrylic paint, we're working background to foreground because acrylic is layered. And so I'm going to dip that big brush that came from the water jar into yellow paint and just start to cover the top half of my canvas. And by the way, this is a 16 by 20 canvas, but it's whatever you have on hand that'll do. Doesn't have to be on canvas. You can you can use uh, other things. You can use a uh, canvas board or thick paper or even I don't know, just other surfaces. You could use plywood, all kinds of things. You can paint acrylic on. But I'm just getting started with water and yellow paint. And the water is sticking down the paint, so it's kind of drippy and a little bit see-through, and that's okay. I just want a thin layer on there. If you just use the paint purely as it comes out of the container, it takes a longer time to dry. So the water thins it out, and it'll actually dry quicker with a little bit of water in it. So I'm just covering the top half of my painting with yellow for now. We want to go down at least halfway. You want to go down at least beyond the horizon line here in the center of our sample because um, since acrylic is layered, you don't want to leave a gap between the sky and the and the ground there. So just go a little bit more than below where you think that horizon line is going to be. So a little bit more than halfway down the, the canvas. And then you can make sure you also paint the edges of the canvas. That'll give it a nice finished look. If you are working on canvas, that'll give the king a nice finished look. It's called a gallery wrap, and it will prevent you from needing a frame when you hang it up above the fireplace tonight to show all your guests. So eventually we'll have guests again, right? So now we'll cover those edges with as well. I'm just going halfway down with my big brush and yellow paint. Now, at the 
studio, we always have music going, but because of copyright issues on YouTube, we're not allowed to play background music. But of course, when you're on mute, you can have your your music going and you can have your own little party going there. I'm getting that all covered with yellow. When you're not using the brushes, I leave them sitting in the water jar because that prevents the brushes from drying out when you're not using them. It's really just, uh, kind of a plastic and it'll dry solid on the brushes. And so we don't want it to dry before we get a chance to wash them. So I just leave them sitting in the water jar for the evening and at the end of the evening I wash the brushes. And since we're not at Sipping and Guinea Hampton, let me do a little brush washing tutorial so that you know for your home materials how to take care of them. I usually take a little bit of liquid soap, put it in the palm of my hand, and then take the brush and switch it around in the liquid soap and then rinse it till it runs clear with water. And then I flatten it out to the original shape of the brush and leave it sitting horizontally on the side of the sink. And that's how you care for your brushes. You just want to leave them, make sure they're wet until you get a chance to clean them off at the end of the evening. If you care for your brushes, I have them for years. And, um, you know, these are not expensive brushes, by the way, that we use. We, the ones that we buy at the studio are actually the, the cheapest grade, I think, that they sell at the uh, uh, art store. And that is because they're the best brushes. I bought them for my home use. I just painted a commission uh, recently, and I used the brushes that we use in the studio because they hold up really well. Like, they don't have to be expensive, so hopefully you have a little basic kit there and you can continue to do art on your own. So now we have our yellow background there. And we're working with painting background to foreground. So I started with the lighter color that's furthest back. And I'm gonna add the green. We have nice sparkly green leaves back there. So I'm gonna stick with that big brush. I just switched it around really well in the water jar. I don't know if you can see that. I'll switch it up around like you need it to get it clean. And then I blot it on the, the paper towel, or in this case, it's an old t-shirt. So blot it on your, your blotting papers and now the brush is nearly damp and I can dip it in the green paint to get those leaves started. And I'm looking at the sample here. I, I think I'm going to mix a little bit of white paint with that green as well. You, you may want to start with the white and add some green. And I'm just mixing that up on the plate. Get a little bit of lighter green. And then I'm going to, I have this one inch uh, sort of squared off brush and I'm going to kind of make short little dashes of paint to make it look like leaves. And I'm turning the brush in my fingers, kind of twisting it around, to make all different sizes and all different, we'll hopefully make different textures and, and sizes and there'll be a variety there. So I mix white with the green paint, mixing that up on my plate there, and then and I'm starting in from the right hand side. We're going to leave more yellow on this round area here on the left. I kind of want to leave that so that it looks like the sun is blowing through those trees. So I'm going to fill in more green dots or leaves uh, starting here on the left. And then I'm going to taper them off as I get towards that spot here. Just kind of make them farther apart and smaller, maybe. Now farther apart. I don't know if they need to be smaller, but they're going to be packed closer together here on the left-hand side. And you can actually go over most of the yellow on that side and kind of hide it. So there is that. I'm, I was glad to see we have visitor all the way from the East Coast tonight. And I got to see pets. I love I love to see the pets. It's really fun. Some advantages of work from home. You get to work with your your animal children. All right. And this is the uh, part where you just add as many of these as you like. And I'm just twisting the brush around my fingers and kind of draining it down vertically. Just all different directions so you get different shapes there. And this is really juicy, juicy painting. You don't have to make them look like leaves. They're just dots, 
really. Who's the thrush? But closer together, more packed in on the left hand side of the canvas. And actually, I go around all the way around the edges too. <laughs> they finish that gallery wrap. And then you can see they're starting to taper off so that they're further apart as I get uh, towards the middle of the canvas because we want to leave this glowing area. There are some leaves on the right hand side there, but apply them slowly and with caution because you don't want to um, obliterate your yellow sun glow. You want to leave that showing. So I'm just going to put them in slowly and decide where I want those green leaves. I'm going to make a whole bunch here along the right hand edge of the canvas because I'm going to kind of make this yellow area circular. So more right on the edge of the canvas. And sometimes I'm dipping the brush into the water jar and adding it to my paint and think that's just out of your view. So I want to let you know that I'm dipping it in the water jar and adding it to that paint on the palette to just make it flow a little uh, nicer for me. You can see that if you don't add water to the paint, you can kind of see the texture of the canvas through the paint. And it, it has like a little bit of a draggy feel if you don't um, add water to the paint. We want it to flow, uh, we want it to flow gently for us. That's the, uh, I think that uh, focus would be. There we go. Given focusing issues. We'll keep while my assistant works on that. There we go. Now we are refocused. I just wanted to make sure you saw that where that canvas showed through. In case you're having that issue, just add a little more water to the paint and it'll flow nicely for you. All right. Adding little green spots. And again, do it slowly so that you leave most of this yellow area open. You can see there's green leaves around there and it's not a perfect circle so I want to leave it kind of in a generally circular shape but some of them can be kind of intruding on that area too just as long as it's more obvious that it's a round area. And going around the edges of the canvas as well. So make sure you stand back from your work as you work. I'm kind of leaning out of here to see if I'm if it's coming together the way I need it to. I think I want more more leaves on the left hand side there. And by the way, I mixed a little white paint with the green paint. So some of my leaves are darker and some are lighter green because I don't mix very carefully. So but that's nice, we give it a little bit of variety. So it's okay if you have some that are lighter and some that are darker, and certainly they can overlap, make them close together and some far apart, and twist your brush around so you get all different shapes of leaves in there and all different sizes. You can dot them, you can see little dots, that would be a nice variety. Got to mix it up. There we go. And I want to just close in that yellow area that's a little bit open here still. And close it just a bit. Add a few more little green leaves. Looks like a drip. There we go. You can just dot them away and nobody will ever know they happen. There it is. It's a happy little accident. All right. Oh, and speaking of, you know, you know where that comes from, oh, happy little accident. That's Bob Ross talk. And the reason why um, that is top of mind is because we do teach Bob Ross classes at Skinny and Hating Hanson. The owner is a certified Bob Ross instructor, and uh, she makes some of the 
of Bob Ross videos on our YouTube channel. So look for that when you check out our YouTube channel. And I um, have seen that we have a number of paintings. My, my coworkers have taught classes and they've all gotten posted on our YouTube channel. And so we have a bunch of classes that are up there. Check it out. And you, if you subscribe and like the videos, that helps us out. And uh, all help in these times is appreciated. So um, let's see. So let me sit my seat. You have to enjoy your beverage as you're painting. And let me tell you about um, some things we have going on. You know, we're uh, selling these little masks. We have one with our uh, Sydney Painting Hampton logo on them, and one that are these sort of watercolory Monet inspired, um, kind of just fun, fun watercolor inspired masks. So that's what I think these are so cute. So you can get a sipping of painting hands and napkin and uh, you'll be a walking, you know, advertisement for fun. That's cool. Um, by the way, I left my brush in the jar while I'm talking to you. Make sure if you step away, you leave your brushes in the jar. So try out. So that, we have those going at the studio. So now, let's see, I want to make sure I am looking at these and I have all my little leaves where I want them. Going to stand back and look at your work. And I want to know what you're doing too. So you can show me your painting too. You can hold them up. We'll see what's going on with you guys. Oh, look at that. That was great. Beautiful. And I can see Zarabeth. I can see yours as your painting, which is cool. <laughs> you got a good setup. Very nice. Lovely. You guys are doing a great job at this. Very good. So now that we have the green leaves on, we want to continue working back around the foreground. So we're going to put in the forest floor from whence the painting gets its name. So I switched my large brush around in the water jar and wiped it on my uh, cool. I always want to say paper towel because we use paper towels in the studio, but at home I have old t shirts that I use from the studio, my personal studio. So now we want to get the forest floor going in there. As you can see that it's predominantly blue. So that's what I'm going to use as the background color. And we're going to work the other colors over that. So um, it's up to you if you want to go completely dark blue. I have this dark phthalo blue that is, I think that's the use just that comes out of the jar. You can also mix a little bit of white. If you want to go lighter with the color, start with the white paint and mix the darker into it because the dark blue sort of takes over. But uh, I think I'm going to just go with that pure blue to start. So I just wet my brush from the water jar and dipping it in the blue paint. And I'm going to just paint that bottom half with blue. And it doesn't matter which direction you go in with your brush stroke, just get it all covered with blue paint. And here again, uh, a lot of water mixed with the paint so that it's not as thick as it is as it comes out of the container because that would take a really long time to dry. And tonight, personally, I don't have alcohol, so I don't have that, uh, <laughs> I don't have that to uh, enjoy while I wait. <laughs> At the studio, I'd have to, you know, relax in the beverage for a while, but we're just moving along with this painting. Do make sure you cover your horizon line over the bottom of your sky there. Make sure you overlap them so that you don't have a gap between the sky and the forest floor. And it does not have to be, I was actually, I, uh, her horizon line tips down on the left, but it, it can be any shape horizon line you like. I, I'm going to make mine sort of dip towards the center. I think I like that. I'm the artist. I can decide, right? You do you. And I'm just covering this with the blue paint, a little bit of water with my big brush. Just make sure whenever you go between colors, you clean that brush off really well by switching it around in the water jar and blending on the towel. That way, you won't mix up your colors. And keep everything clean and tidy. Well, I guess that's my way of doing it, but um, actually, this is a pretty new painting. You don't even have to keep it too neat and tidy. You can just mix it up pretty well and still come up with a beautiful painting. Some of them, 
some of the paintings you paint are just really loose and fun, and I like that. Makes for a relaxing evening. And I am going all the way around the edges here, too, to complete that gallery wrap, because I like that finished look, so that I don't have to get frames from our paintings. And uh, we do hang the paintings up that we have done in our own house. So we have a bunch of them. I can see them from where I'm sitting. I know you can't, but they're hanging up on my stairwell. All our sipping and painting, family paintings, and my Sometimes my kids would join me, and actually, um, my child is going to be teaching tomorrow's class. So, that, tune in for Sabrina. Uh, they're going to be doing this evening journey painting. That is tomorrow's work of art. That's what it's all on. The original is actually by Vanessa, and I believe Vanessa's teaching on Friday, and then I think Katie on Saturday. So. Whenever you tune in, you'll have a different instructor. Hmm. Lifting this up off the easel so I can get the bottom edge too. You want to remember that one, especially if you hang them in the stairwell, because otherwise, every time you walk up the steps, you'll notice, whoops, I forgot the bottom. You gotta make sure you pick it up off the easel and take that bottom edge as well. And going around the right hand side too. Oh, you can see the back. Let me show you the actual paint. Oops, there you go. <laughs> that, that on easel. Now, I'm, by the way, wearing gloves, mostly because I don't like to get painty. When I pick up the paintings to show you and stuff, I get paint. And I know I'm an artist, but I don't like to get painty. That's just a personal thing. The acrylic paint does wash off with soap and water. It gives me, for some reason, like warmer water. comes off easier. Uh, and sometimes I even use a little abrasive, you can either use abrasive soap with a little pumice in it, or I actually have a little block that they use when they sand walls, when they do drywall. So <laughs> that's a little weird tip, but that helps get the acrylic paint off your hands. Don't wear gloves. Otherwise, these are the kind that come in those kits that you use to do your hair, you know, just those little vinyl gloves. So here I am cleaning the brush off in the water, and I'm going to leave that dry for just a minute. We just have blue paint at the bottom overlapping our sky at the top. And then we'll get to our happy little trees. Oh, we gotta do we'll do a little bit more of the parts where I'm gonna take the trees. So let's see, let me also tell you we have other things going on in the studio. Uh, of course we haven't been able to have guests uh, just yet, but um, we do have art kits for sale and now we have art kits for children as well as adults. Uh, the children's kits the canvases are a little bit smaller for those smaller hands. They have uh, eight by ten canvases, and then the grown-ups, I believe, have the full-size canvases. So you can pick those up at Tiffany Painting Hampton, and uh, there's small cost for those, but you can uh, pick that up, and you can use them for painting with us on YouTube as well. And then, uh, so remember the maps for sale while you're there. So now. Let's add a little bit to our forest floor. It's had a little bit of a chance to dry. I'm switching that brush around in the water jar and I'm going to blot it on paper towel because now I'm going to get some white paint. The whole forest floor here is dappled with sunlight and we're going to add in the shadows later, but I want the dappled sunshine to be in the background because those shadows are going to uh, overlap and go over top of that. So just Taking that big brush in here, you can switch to the medium brush as well. I'm just, we have a lot of sort of canvas real estate to cover here, so I'm sticking with the big brush myself. But if you want more hand control, you can always switch to a smaller brush. But just put little dapples of white, the same way I did the dapples of green at the top. We're just twisting the brush around in our fingers, and it's okay. My, my paint is still wet beneath it, so I'm getting a little bit of mix, but I like that because I don't want them to be all pure white so i'll have a variety if i keep dipping it in the white from the palette it'll come out white on the canvas until it starts mixing with the wet paint beneath it and then we'll get a nice variety so it's, it's good to keep it going and that's, and that's one. and here i'm going to do uh just little dapples all over the forest floor we have them she kind of concentrated them she kelly who did the original painting kind of left 
it a little darker on the lower right and kind of a little darker, it looks like on the upper left there of the forest floor. So you could go with that. I'm not sure if there's a right or wrong way to do that. Just enjoy yourself as you put it in your little white dapple. But I'm just teach you to this sample here. Now, I always say that we do teach from a painting sample, but there's no right or wrong in art. There's no requirement that it looks exactly like the sample. And um, I always hope that you're just having fun and having an experience and doing your own thing because you're your own unique artist and you have your own built-in visual language. So it'll never look exactly like the sample. I can never match them up exactly. I just want to have fun with it. So enjoy yourself. And a little white dapple here and there. And if you feel like, you know, now I'm looking at it, maybe I went a little overboard. You can always add back in the blue. You go back and forth between the colors. If you go back to white after that, though, make sure you push that brush around really well because the, the dark paint will take over. So you want to clean it off as you go between colors. Right now, I decided, yeah, maybe that was a little too much white there. So I'm going to knock some of those back, especially I wanted to leave it a little darker and then it's coming up. So I'm going to add a little blue back in there. You can always rebalance it. That's the beauty of working with acrylic. It's very adjustable. Put some dark blue dapples here on the right hand side. Let me show you that. It was, it was mine. There were sort of, uh, it was not a lot of texture from the um, original coat of paint I put on there. So I wanted to add a little bit of dapples to give that uh, the look of fallen leaves on the forest floor. I'm going to give that a little bit of texture. So I'm adding a little blue, little blue dapples. And they could be, there could be a white one here and there too. You can throw one in every once in a while. I'm not even cleaning the brush now. I'm kind of going between. I just add, I just add a little white there to get some lighter ones. So but now I'm going back to the blue and adding some more blue on this right hand side. A little bit of a back and forth. I want them to be a variety. And I'm also, I'm also keeping an eye on my sample to make sure I'm faithful to it for you as much as I can be. And finishing this up with some darker Leads more towards the right hand side, darker, darker dapples, more towards the right hand side. I tend to paint a little fast because I've done this a lot, so I, I know I should probably give you a little time to catch up. Oh, I hadn't mentioned uh, my Venmo account. <laughs> so, um, we are uh, we are on Venmo at, at Ernstein Art, and that is uh, to give you an opportunity if you want to treat this like you were at Sabine Painting Hampton. That is the virtual tip jar, so that's where you go on Venmo. My uh, sort of name is at Ernstein Art. So that would be, is always appreciated. You've been a little bit. Uh, it hasn't been optimal since uh, this whole shutdown goes. So we're kind of changing things up. All right. So now I've got a little bit more white on the left left hand side of the canvas and a little bit darker. A few white dapples on the right hand side, but not as many. I always want to kind of keep it random. It's hard to prevent uh, making regular patterns sometimes. It depends on, I guess, personality and how you like to work. But um, try to 
keep in mind you want to make some brushwork space, some small, some close together, some far apart. And that's always true when you're painting things in nature like uh, leaves or stars because you want to uh, just kind of keep it random and, and it makes it look nice and natural. And it'll look like a death with far as four. Sit my teeth, my angry at me. Sangria is one of our most popular drinks. Uh, well, um, because I'm right handed, you get to see my people. Uh, <laughs> I'm very particular about my mother. He drinks a lot of tea. So now I've got that background going. Are you guys caught up to me? Uh, you can hold up your paintings and I can see. Along. I'll give you a minute to catch up with all those little dapples. All right. Got our little happy trees to see. Let's see. Oh, and um, I want to tell you. I am using uh, acrylic paint that's more liquid acrylic. You can also buy acrylic in tubes, but it'll have a different feel for you. It's stickier. I kind of prefer the liquid paint if you want to work quicker because the tube paint has more of a drag to it. That's a different feel. But you can experiment and see what you like. And let us put in our little forest floor now. So now I'm going to switch to my medium sized brush and I'm just going to dip that into the water jar to get that started. I always want to do that when we start on this with a dry brush. And then I'm going to blot that on the paper towel. And this time I'm going to get a little black paint and go over. I'm going to start by going over that horizon line because I know where that is. This can be a thick, thin line. It doesn't have to be, pardon me uniform it can be just thick and thin and your hand can be shaky it's okay if you're uh fully castrated from this morning beverage you can uh it you can have a wavy line there and that's cool it'll make it it'll uh, be consistent with that natural feel that we want that is consistent by being inconsistent right so i'm pressing the brush to the canvas on some parts and lifting it up a little bit more on other parts so I get thicker when I press the brush to the canvas and thinner when I lift it up off and I get a little variety that way. I'm just going across that line and you don't have to do it in one continuous line. You can pick the brush up off of it and touch it down. Take my back, make sure you get it the way you like it, but I have that little dividing horizon line there. Make sure you see that up close. And then we can start to put our happy little trees in. Now, for my trees, I'm going to start with this medium-sized brush. And whenever you want to go with thinner branches, you can switch to the smaller brush. So let me dip that into the black paint. And these trees, I don't know if you can see on this sample, some of them come up from the horizon line, but they also dip, the roots of them dip just beneath the, the horizon line, so it's below that line that you painted, and then others of them go even further down. So the ones that are bigger, wider trees, I'm actually going to make it a little bit further down, I think. Let's see how that goes. So I'm going to start from the left. Since I, I'm going to start with what's further away from me here. I'm going about, about a hand, or so four fingers width beneath that horizon line with the black brush and I'm pressing the brush to the canvas and in this case I have a flat brush so I'm actually I kind of twist it as I go I start with it on the broad part of the brush and then I twist it to the skinny part as I can move up if you find that's too hard then just switch to a thinner brush and you can do it this way as well you can just make it wider at the bottom and skinnier as it goes up 
that works it, whatever tedious for you. So here I am using that medium sized brush and I'm just twisting it around in my fingers and I'm seeing it two times at the bottom and lifting it up and off as I go up. And I'm going to go all, all the way up to the edge of the canvas with these trees. They're tall trees and we can't see the top, so they go all the way up off the edge. And I started with those three at a hand width down to that horizon line, but I want to make a variety of these. So I'm going to make one next to it, but even a little bit lower than that. And it can be the same thickness or slightly different. We can kind of change it up. This one will be a little bit wider as it goes up. And you can see my hand is shaky, which is really good because um, we don't want it to be a perfectly straight line. We want it to be a, give it a little bit of a curve and make that an interesting shaped tree. We, we, we don't want them to be little sticks. We want them to be gently swaying trees. So I've got those two thick ones. Now I'm going to put one wide and one more towards the middle. And this one's going to almost cut that horizon line. This is almost in the middle of the canvas. See, it is. Again, I'm sitting off at an angle. So it's almost right at the center. Up to you how you want to form your composition though. And here again, making my hand wave a little bit. If it's too hard to use that medium by brush, a small brush, and you can smooth out those edges. I do want to have a variety of thicknesses to the, to the trees. Right now, three are pretty, pretty uniform. And you can also kind of spread out the uh, roots in the shape of the letter A, kind of drag out the little edges there and get a little going, even if you want to get into that detail. I don't know if that's strictly necessary with this. I can hold it up and you can see the tree roots. You can lay them out like little, like little octopus legs, what it reminds me of. And then, we're going to add a couple more wider trees that are towards this left-hand side of the canvas, but not all the way going to the edge. On the sorry, the right-hand side. On the right here, I'm going to have a series of uh, thinner, more saplings, and so I, I just want to make a couple more wide ones that are on the right-hand side, but not totally off to the right. I'm going all the way up and off. With those trees as well. And these two, I'm going to make swaying away from each other. I'm going to make one lower, so further down from the horizon line, and we'll sway it slightly to the right because we want a variety. Now, right now, my trees are just sticks, so we want to add a couple of branches. Whenever I add branches to the brushes, I just drop that medium sized brush in the water jar and it picks up a little skinny one. And just wipe it on the paper towel because it was in the jar. Whenever you get a uh, brush from the jar, you want to make sure you get the excess water off of it. I'm going to take that medium size, or sorry, a little skinny brush, dip it in the black paint, and add a few branches here and there. Now keep in mind that um, usually when I add branches, I make them no wider than the uh, trunks that they're coming off of. It can be that wide, but it has to be either that wide or skinnier as you come off of that branch. And I usually move them up in a Y shape or a V shape off the main trunk. So you can see this little side branch is a little bit skinnier than that trunk. And then it's a wavy line that just tapers off into a point. And I'm getting the point by lifting the brush away from the canvas as I take. And you can kind of twist it around in your fingers as well. And you can add additional little Y shape or V shape twigs as you come off of those main branches. Just remember, keep it uh, no wider than the branch that it comes off of. And if you, if you, um, you can always work backwards. If you get too wide, the one you added, you can make the branch you came off of a little wider and then go back and make the trunk a little wider. It's always adjustable, which is really nice. So just adding a few branches, and these can go up and off the edge of the canvas. 
just adding Y shapes and Z shapes to some of my big trees. The trees are looking beautiful these days. We've been taking lots of walks around the neighborhood and enjoying the trees. And they can overlap as well. They can, these branches that I'm adding, they can cross over into the neighboring tree as well. They don't all have to be the same. I generally move up, but that's not a requirement. You can also go horizontally or even slightly down. You can experiment. I think that it's just, you can make them go in all the directions with all different kinds of trees, but um, just be consistent with how you add your branches. So just adding them in. And I'm having you come off the trunks at sort of random intervals there. I think that's enough for my big trees. Close up view of that guy. Just a few here and there. Because now I want to add a series of saplings to my painting as well. So I'm going to use that small brush again. I had dropped it in the water jar. So just wiping it on the paper towel and dipping it in the black paint, that small brush. And I'm going to come up off the horizon line and make a whole series of saplings that are just as wide as that little skinny brush. So not very wide at all. Making them a little wider at the roots, I kind of doubled up on that brush stroke at the bottom there. But um, but they're pretty skinny little trees, and they can they can be little weighty guys and gals. They can go all the way from the horizon line up to the top, and actually you can drop them beneath the horizon line, same as our big trees. I'm going to make those a little bit further back so they're closer to the horizon line, so they're visually further back on our composition. But making a whole bunch of those little twigs, twiggy trees going up. We have a little twiggy tree that grows outside our house. Our neighbor gave us a, a little um, seedling a couple of years ago, and it has grown from, it was like three leaves the first season, and now it's um, about knee high, and we call it the mighty oak. And we have great hopes that one day it'll provide some shape. But, you know, so far so good. It's going to take a while. Make sure your uh, paint has enough water in it that it flows nicely for you. Here again, I got that little canvas texture shown through when I did that latest brush stroke. So I decided the paint was too was dragging too much for me. So I, I mixed around a little bit of water on the plate. I kind of dip it in the water jar and spin it around. We want the paint to be about the consistency of Hershey syrup that flows for us. And make some of these little saplings closer together and some farther apart. You make a little gap there in my tree forest. Just gonna keep a variety. I am going all the way up a lot off the edge with these. They don't all have to go up off the edge. You can make some of them lower. Oh, and I added some branches in there without even thinking about it. You can add some V-shaped branches coming off these little saplings as well. And I'm going to fill in. I want a whole bunch of these in the background. I guess these are about a finger's width or two fingers width apart. These little saplings. And a little bit wider at the root because the trees are always uh, widest at the source of growth and then they get skinnier as they move up in the way towards the sky. So we want to make them a little wider at the root. There we go. Oh and see I had a little bobble there and that's where I'm going to make a branch come up so then nobody can see that I made a mistake. It'll be just as I planned it because nobody will ever know. So wherever you have a little bobble in your uh, tree trunk you can always add a branch. And adding a whole bunch of these little saplings on the right hand side here. And they're just beneath that horizon line to start. And a couple of branches will make them cross over and go all the way up across the edge. And actually, I do want to, I like to continue that illusion on the, on the gallery wrap up there. Going all the way around the edge where the canvas wraps the Stretcher bars. There was a question 
on Reddit, they said like, what two things do um, uh, totally unrelated uh, people and careers have in common that they could discuss? And I thought uh, sailors could have a discussion with artists about canvas because the canvas that they use actually originally came from the canvas that they used to make so they used to, the artist used to go down to the dock, get some canvas, and stretch that over wood. And that was how we got started with painting on canvas. You can always paint on plywood or other surfaces. But uh, actually, gosh, I guess you see a ton of murals around town, so you know that. But you can uh, go down to the dock and get your own canvas. We used to be very particular in art school about fancy canvas, but now they have these pre stretched ones, which are so great. Because you want to make sure that if you do use raw canvas, you have to cover it with gesso. That's why they come white, because they've been gessoed for us. And that seals the fabric in so that the paint doesn't deteriorate the, the fabric. Well, art trivia for you. Never know what I'm going to say. So just adding a couple little little twigs in there. I decided for a little variety we would make some smaller. And and then I got my happy little tree. So I right, hope you're all catching up with me and I'm not painting too fast. You guys get can we have a your yeah? Can we have a thank few minutes? Saplings. Sure. Oh, thank you. Let's see. Look at my notes and see if I forgot anything. Oh, I didn't even ask you. Are you guys celebrating anything tonight? Anything got celebration coming up? No, chilling and game. Because usually we do a toast at the studio, and uh, let's see. Um, here is to good friends to get us through all kinds of trials and way. Cheers. You have to drink when you toast, right? What we just want to do a toast. Um, got a lot of stuff coming up. My my parents' anniversary is coming up. <laughs> and you know, June, that's a big anniversary month. So you probably know lots of people who are having anniversaries coming up. And then um I guess Father's Day is coming up too. So I didn't even realize that my, my child asked me, Are we doing anything for Father's Day? And I said, Oh yeah, we should do something. Yeah, we should. We should remember that. <laughs> so every, you know, time is so free flowing these days. I'm not even sure you know when things are anymore. So I don't know. Just going with the flow. And feel free to you can unmute yourself if you have any questions too. Uh, do you have anything to add to the about your class tomorrow? No. Yeah. Gonna take the evening journey. It's like a nice little painting, tomorrow's painting. A different sort of tree. You've got the pine trees in tomorrow, so you can learn a different technique. And actually, we've been doing all sorts of painting, our usual um, variety that we do from the studio. At the studio, we have about 500 paintings. We um, had always added to the collection, and we have so many paintings now. We just shoot out seasonally, and there's always something new to paint. So you can look at our upcoming calendar and find one that you like. And hopefully, we'll be uh, able to open up and, and do some of these in person as well. All right. Hopefully you have some snacks there too. I had um, orange slices 
when I was doing my painting last week, but I left it too close to the paint. You always got to make sure you keep the snacks far away from the paint. I still wouldn't want to eat the paint. I once opened a tube of paint with my teeth. Do not do that either. Very bad because we don't want paint in our mouth. That is not good. So learn from me. I've made all the mistakes that you won't have to. So now I'm going to add some shadows to the tree. And in this sample here, um, the we've got it lighter towards the right hand side. So we want to add uh, the shadows moving away from that light. So they're going to be um, angled away from this source of light on the right hand side. So I'm going to use my medium size brush for this. And here again, you can always use the small one if you're more comfortable with it. But I did take that out of the water jar, slot it on the paper towel, and load it up with some black paint. And now I'm going to look at where my light source is, and I'm going to move that brush slightly diagonally to the right on these trees, the right hand side, away from that, that bright spot on the right. And I'm pressing the brush to the canvas at the roots of the trees and lifting it up and off as I move away. And here again, you know, this does not have to be a perfect mirror image of these trees because nobody is going to look that close at this very loose painting. But you can split those off in the shapes of wise if you want to just give a hint of these are um, shadows of the branches above. Don't get too worked up about um, matching them up though because I would like to say, if anybody looks that close to your painting, you just poke them in the eye with that brush, right? <laughs> don't let them give you a hard time. We're having fun with this. We don't want this to be hard. Yeah. The shadows so, are like the black paint or the blue paint? I'm using black paint for the shadows. So that's with the medium size brush, and you can use either the medium size or the small brush. And actually, I'm going to have to switch to the small brush for those little saplings. I started with the wider um, tree trunks here. So let me hold that up so you can see that. I know it's pretty dark on this hard to see far away, but I've got just those little shadows moving away from that source of light. Um, so if the source of light is here, they're going to be um, diagonal off to the right-hand side of the canvas, my right-hand tree. And then the ones that are on the left-hand side, we're going to move in the opposite direction. So we want the shadows to be moving off towards the left, away from that source of light with the trees that are on the other side of the center. On, on left of center, the shadows will move left as well. And they get more angular as they get further away, too. So the, it'll be a higher angle, more towards the horizon line as you move away with those shadows. This, this is not, I'm not making them real perfect. This is kind of just kind of messy little, little shadows because this is a very loosely painted, very impressionist painting, if you will. Very Monet inspired. It's funny, I don't know if you can hear, I don't know how like closely the audio tracks on Zoom, but my husband is playing a Zoom game upstairs and I guess he's winning because I keep hearing, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> must be going well, right? So I started with my big wide trees and I'm going to switch to the little skinny brush for my sapling. So adding those tree shadows and they are getting more angled as they go on the left hand side and I have them crossing right over, they're just overlapping the trees beneath them. Let me hold that up so you can see it. The shadows I just added in, they just overlap right over those trees that are there. And I'm getting a little bit lower in the angle, going more towards the bottom edge of the canvas as I go towards the center tree. So it, it's splayed out. We want it to be a um, sort of starburst of shadows that come away from that source of light. Same way you have, like, if you drew a picture of the sun and you drew the corona around the 
the sun. Oh, I shouldn't say that. That's like that's the word I shouldn't say in the world right now. <laughs> but that's what it's called when you have the star burst around uh, stars, the little, the little fingers of fire that come off of it. I'm sorry, that's what it's called. I can't help it. It's the corona. So you want it, of course, moving away from the center of the shape. <laughs> well, you just never know what I'm going to come up with. Man, and I'm not even drinking tonight. Imagine if I had alcohol here. And I'm just putting in those little tree shadows as well. And going all the way around those edges too. Sometimes I'm going to make a little, um, these are upside down V shapes to make those branches. To make little reflections, just a hint that there are branches above. And like I said, I'm not even looking to see if they really reflect. Uh, I'm not, I'm just not going to waste a lot of mental energy on that. I'm just making them uh, branches down here because nobody's going to know. They're not going to look that close. They're going to be relaxing many feet back on your couch eating snacks and they're going to glance up the painting every once in a while. There I go with that. Good. Art is, and it's an experience when you paint it and when it's experienced when it's hanging, uh, it's sort of a more fleeting thing. I think it gives the room atmosphere and uh, life, but you know, rarely do people go up and study it unless it's in a museum. I think, looking at this sample I've covered up there, that I want one or two more skinny brushes on my painting as well. And here, this is where it's important as the artist that you step back from the painting and take a look at it every once in a while so you make sure it's shaping up the way you like. And when I, when I looked at the whole thing, I decided I think it needs a little more in the center here. Just adding one more. And that triangle come pretty straight down off that light. And I think I need a little uh, let me finish out that shadow. Take it off. And some of these shadows are longer than others. I kind of kind of made that random too. And I want to make a couple a little uh, bright dapples of white. I feel like I should have maybe put in a little sunshine in the background. So I cleaned that medium brush off really well. My water is it's, uh, a little bit muddy right now, but it, if you clean it off by switching it on really well, you'll still get it clean. And I'm blotting it on the paper towel, and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white and add a couple of dapples of white right in that center. Just a couple of spots. If you accidentally overlap your paint or your painted trees, you can go back and uh, paint them back in. I, just, I feel like I needed a little bit of bright white near that center to really give that source of light. So right now I, I overlap the tree there. I'll hold that up. I can actually leave that. You know, it would actually kind of look like it was a solar flare over my tree. But I'm gonna I'm gonna paint over my tree back in. I just wanted to make sure it was real bright there so that that was a clear source of light. So that's how that looks. Let me put that back in there. Just brighten up my sunlight. And then we're, we're almost done with this. I want to also, um, I just overlapped the white, but I painted the tree back in. But I do want to give a hint of a few overlapping leaves on top of my branches as well. So I'm going to clean off that medium sized brush and load it up with green paint again. And actually this is kind of fun. You can use you can even mix it my my palette. It, it, it kind of the paint wanders from the blue to the green and I kinda of like that. I might use blue green. You know, you're the artist. You can you can use a variety. So I mix a little blue with the green because I think that would be nice. And I'm going to add a few leaves, especially off this right hand side, uh, overlapping my trunk and branches here and there as well. And not a lot, and not a regular pattern. My gosh, I just started making a regular pattern. Don't want to do that. Want to switch it up. So some overlapping, 
and some close together, some far apart, some big, some small, but just a few here and there that go over those branches. I'll hold that up so you can see that. I just added, they're a little bit darker in color, as you can see, and that uh, blue-green made them a little darker, and it makes them kind of look like they pop forward in our composition because it's a little bit darker. That's kind of nice. And I just added a few there, probably a dozen. I mean, uh, it's, it's up to you, the artist, how many you want to do. But uh, a few on the right hand side, and then tapering off. I'm just going to add one or two as they get towards that light source here and there. And then just a couple on the right hand side. Or I, I always, I don't know how many. It would be maybe, I don't know, half a dozen, a dozen. But make sure you. Keep from making your regular pattern. Some small, some large. Come right off the edge. But just a few here and there. And you can add as many of that as you want. And once I have that there, I'm going to continue with that blue-green paint and add a few uh, drop leaves on the far floor. So overlapping my tree shadows, which actually I think I'm going to come back. That I'm going to have to reinstate. But I, I want to have, I want to pull down visually the green from the top to the bottom. So I do want to make some little green leaves on the far floor. I guess you could have told you that earlier, but I'm sorry. I did not. I'm going to have to put, in, put back in those trees. Just a couple green ones here and there. And let me put back in wherever I overlap my shadows. And then it'll look like they go right over your leaves that you just added. It's kind of a back and forth. I'm just painting with acrylic. That's what makes acrylic so fun because uh, watercolor, you have to be more precise because you can't. Um, layer it and it's through. But here we can go back and forth and adjust the layers. They're needed. And so there we go. We've got our little uh, forest. Forest forest. Is that the name of the thing? Forest forest? No, I forgot. And I want to see what you're working on as well. We'll have everybody hold up their paintings and we can get a screenshot and brag about it to all our friends. Oh, um, I, my, I said I should mention my Venmo at Ernst Team Art. And let's see, I think I gave you the other information about the shop. Feel free to uh, you can contact Nancy. She's in the shop in the afternoon selling those kits for kids and adults. And we also have maps for sale and YouTube videos. Check those out. Subscribe to our channel, and you can see my other colleagues teach as well. We'll be teaching. We have uh, classes online now Thursday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And uh, and look at our upcoming schedule. I may uh, I may even be leaving some out. So check out our online schedule for that. And hopefully we'll be uh, opening up soon for regular classes. So look out for that. All right, how are you? How are you guys coming with your paintings? You're almost done. You want to uh, show all of them, and we can take a picture. You guys, show them to Sabrina. We're we're okay. getting we're almost done. Okay. I gotta have the group shot. <laughs> Shannon, I love yours. Thanks for holding it up. Oh, oh beautiful, beautiful. Oh, you gotta get a shot. We'll take a screenshot. Hold up your beans. Oh, do we have everyone? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, they're our best. Wow, hers is. Wow. I feel like I didn't. Quite nail it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn and Marina, do you have 
Uh, images you want to show us? Hey, Sir Beth. These are so good. Look how great you guys did. These are beautiful. I love it. Sir Beth. Oh, huh? Marilyn. Oh, there we go.